Hello YouTube. Let's talk about the moon again. There's always something about our satellite, always something new. Researchers have discovered a mysterious formation of radioactive stones on the far side of the moon. If your imagination has done something like Stonehenge and uh, maybe glowing, something glowing from radiation, then the answer is no. The stone block or a scattering of boulders lies shallow before the surface, below the surface, and the total size of the anomalous zone on the moon is about 50 kilometers. So far, scientists have suggested that they have finally managed to discover a real volcano that erupted 3.5 billion years ago. They reasoned like this. Dense radioactive stones resemble granite, although, of course, no one has touched the anomaly, so to say, yet, and it is impossible to say for sure. On Earth, granite surrounds the vents of volcanoes. Most likely, it was the same on the moon. Since the activity of the moon has long been over, the volcano is ancient. As you can see, there are quite a lot of stretching points here. The main stretch, water is needed for the, forma for the formation of granite. Let's say there was water on the moon a long time ago, but granite was found only here. <clears throat> that is, there was a lake in the center of which there was a volcano, right? <clears throat> and all this on the moon? The picture, <clears throat> of course, is simply amazing. Volcanoes on the moon have been searched for for a long time. When Galileo looked at the moon through a telescope and saw craters, he had no other idea but that these were volcanoes. After all, they looked so much like Vesuvius. And they were considered volcanoes until the 1960s, when they finally realized that all the lunar craters, without exception, were left by meteorites. Was there really no volcanism on the moon? Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kazaryov, however, observed the release of some gases from the bowels of the planet, but the phenomenon proceeded sluggishly. Now it is clear that, yes, how ancient volcanoes were simply filled up with fragments of rocks that were crushed by meteorites and flooded with lava that protruded from the bowels. Apparently, we found a remnant of such a volcano after all. Interestingly, it is on the reverse or the opposite or the far side of the moon. And on the front, there is nothing like that. The sides of the moon are generally very different. Even with a simple eye, dark spots are visible on the disk of the moon with a naked eye. These are lava fields. Traditionally, they are called seas. But there are practically no seas on the reverse, on the opposite side. They decided that the Earth, by its attraction, stretches the visible part. The surface cracks and lava protrudes from the bowels. And now it turns out that there were volcanoes only on the reverse side. And these facts are somehow connected, but it is still unclear how. And of course, it is not at all clear why the water, if there was any, was concentrated here. You've probably read that there is water at the south pole of the moon, but there are mere drops compared to the lake that gave birth to the granite rock. The reverse side of the moon generally throws up a lot of questions. Recently, the Chinese... No wonder they launched the uh, lunar rover on the reverse side of the moon. Well, the Chinese discovered a mineral there, which they prefer to immediately classify. What has leaked to the tabloids is shocking. Allegedly, this stone can produce electricity and without any special effects on it. They write that you don't need to knock on it. You don't need to light it, it but just connect it, connect the, connect the wiring. Perpetual motion machine, rather, of course, an internal battery, that's what it should call it. 
humanity is starting a lunar race, and it already looks a bit like how Europe conquered the new world. And this is the Russian description of the events that are taking place on the moon and the, the chase to control it. So keep that in mind, but let me tell you what they think. At that time, the brilliant civilizations of Mexico and South America were ruthlessly destroyed, and the colonialists themselves came to grips with each other, and the riches of the new continent brought not prosperity to the old world, but wars and suffering. NASA recently stated that lunar water should not go to a specific country, but to all of humanity, which to the Russians looks like this. In the interpretation of NASA, it means the United States. The main thing is that China does not take over the lunar water, NASA emphasizes. China, in turn, hides the minerals found on the reverse side of the moon. Even if their properties are not as amazing as the tabloids describe, this is somewhat strange. It is the reverse side that will become the main arena of a new battle of humanity for new habitats. There are several reasons for this. Rich resources, poorly explored areas, you can easily hide what you find, complete isolation from the earth, even large-scale projects can be carried out in secret. It is difficult to com communicate with the earth only through a satellite in the high lunar orbit, protection from powers like India and Israel, which are already looking at the moon but are unlikely to be able to compete with the United States and China on the reverse side of the moon, the competition for the resources of the reverse side starts around 2025 and will last at least a decade. Russia is also preparing, preparing to join it but their lunar program is scheduled for about the year 2030. However, who knows how it will turn out? There, the Russians warn and say this, American projects are mostly good in computer simulation and on a 3D printer. But in fact, China is leading the race now with which the Russians have a good cooperation in space. All right. Scientists discovered new mineral on the moon, which could be new source of boundless energy. Well, after this discovery, China announced the launch of three more spacecraft to the moon. Chinese scientists have announced that they have discovered a new mineral in rocks that were brought to Earth as part of the Chang'e 5 mission back in 2020. This mineral was named Chang'ezite Y in honor of the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e. A series of lunar missions of China is also named in her honor. Chinese scientists have discovered a new mineral in the lunar rocks, which is the sixth such mineral on the Earth's satellite that people have discovered. And thus, China became the third country to make such a discovery. It is known from open sources, ladies and gentlemen, that's it, that this phosphate mineral is similar to a colorless crystal and it contains the isotope helium-3, which is considered as a potential source of energy in the future. A new mineral called Changazite Y was extracted from samples of lunar soil which was delivered to Earth by a Chinese spacecraft as part of the Chang'e 5 lunar exploration mission back in 2020. Immediately after the announcement of the new discovery, the Chinese National Space Administration announced that it had received permission from the Chinese government to organize three new unmanned missions to the moon over the next 10 years. <clears throat> the discovery of a new lunar mineral and new Chinese missions to the moon could put more pressure on the United States to step up its efforts to explore the moon. So, in recent years, China's space ambitions have increased. China will soon 
complete the assembly of its space station. Several missions have been sent to the moon. And, and that country has plans not only for an Earth satellite, but also for Mars. Therefore, China is in direct competition with the United States in space. Both countries want not only to explore the moon, but also to extract useful, valuable resources there. And this may cause another round of tension between the United States and China. New Chinese missions are aimed at exploring the South Pole of the Moon, but NASA is also planning to land its first astronauts in the 21st century and equip the first lunar base there. So now we have heard from the Russians, from independent sources, but also now let's look at India. Let's see what India is doing. India's space agency is waiting to launch a rocket in late July 2023 that will attempt to land a rover on the moon and mark the country's arrival as a power in space exploration and the new frontier of space commerce. Only the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China have made successful lunar landings. An attempt by a Japanese startup earlier um, this year ended with the lander crashing. Built on a budget of just under $75 million, the Chandrayaan-3 is set to blast off from India's main spaceport in the southern state of Andhra Pradesh. If everything goes to the plan, a 43.5 meter, 143 feet, LVM-3 launch rocket will blast the spacecraft into an elliptical Earth orbit before it loops towards the moon for a scheduled landing around August 23. The launch of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is the country's first major mission since Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government announced policies to spur investment in private space launches and related satellite-based businesses. India wants its space companies to increase their share of the global launch market by fivefold within the next decade. Chandrayaan, which means moon vehicle in Sanskrit, includes a two meter tall lander designed to deploy a rover near the lunar south pole, where it is expected to remain functional for two weeks, running a series of experiments. But analysts say that the launch also has a secondary mission signaling India is open for business in the accelerating private sector space race. You see the ISRO Chandrayaan-2 mission in 2020 successfully deployed an orbiter, deployed an orbiter, but its lander and rover were destroyed in a crash near where the Chandrayaan-3 will attempt a touchdown, but still not the reverse side of the moon. So for now, it's China's. We'll see how it, it develops. But there is something definitely out there on that far side of the moon. And I'll bring you more stories as I get <coughs> information, of course, from open sources, um, and see what else comes our way. But I think the battle for the moon has definitely begun. If you like my research, please uh, support it uh, through the links you'll find in the description uh, to this video. Please tell others about my channel. Please like my videos. Thank you for your attention to my work.